Hello students, today we are going to perform estimation of copper by iodometry. Apparatus, we will use burette, pipette, conical flask, beakers, measuring cylinders, etc. In chemicals, we are going to use potassium dichromate. Okay, this is a standard potassium dichromate solution. We will use copper sample in which the amount of copper needs to be estimated. We will require hypo that is sodium thiosulfate. This needs to be standardized. We will use Ki solution, 10% Ki solution we will be using, 10 ml of it. We will be using 10 ml of sulfuric acid, this is dilute sulfuric acid. We will use glacial acetic acid. We are going to use ammonium thiocyanate, sodium carbonate and starch as indicator. The estimation of copper is a redox titration. Okay. Now in redox titrations, iodine can be used directly or indirectly as an oxidizing agent right so depending upon those we have different categories of iodine titrations so basically iodine titrations are those where iodine can be used either directly or indirectly as an oxidizing agent so let us come to come to the types of iodine titration first is iodimetric titration right iodimetric titrations are defined as those iodine titrations in which a standard iodine solution is used as an oxidant okay and iodine is directly titrated with a reducing agent so there will be direct titration of iodine so this becomes iodimetric titration second category is iodometric titration which we are going to perform today iod iodometric titrations are defined as those iodine titrations in which some oxidizing agent liberates iodine and then the liberated iodine is titrated against a standard solution of reducing agent and this is placed in the burette okay uh, in the burette today we are going to take the hypo solution so obviously this becomes our reducing agent we are going to standardize this hypo solution against standard potassium dichromate solution first okay so in iodometric titrations a neutral or an acidic solution of oxidizing agent is employed that is the reason we are going to add some amount of sulfuric acid okay now the amount of iodine liberated is equivalent to the quantity of the oxidizing agent present this we will see in the calculations now let us first understand the procedure right students the first part of the process is standardization of hypo solution for this i have filled the burette up to the mark with hypo okay we have taken 25 ml of potassium dichromate we will be needing 10 ml each of ki and dilute sulfuric acid and we will utilize starch as indicator okay so these are the things which will be required now let us start with the performance this is our k2cr207 that is potassium dichromate burette has hypo solution okay to this potassium dichromate solution, we are going to add 10 ml of Ki and 10 ml of sulfuric acid. After adding these two, we are going to close the mouth of the conical flask, swirl the solution and let it rest for a minute or two. Right? After this, we are going to start the titrations. We are actually allowing the iodine to get liberated here. And this should not react with the atmospheric oxygen. Therefore, we have 
covered the flask. Okay. So, after doing this much, we are going to add hypo solution from the burette in a dropwise manner. Okay. Now, through the burette, let us add hypo solution. Now, you must have noticed that I have not added any indicator right now. Because in iodine titrations, we always add indicator near the end point. Because starch has a tendency to form a complex with iodine. This is the reason we are putting starch near the end point. Fine. Now, what we are doing right now is we are titrating the solution. Now, when we are going to add the starch after the solution of K2Cr2O7 uh, reduces in color as in the color diminishes a little, it becomes a little paler, then we are going to add the starch solution. Okay? So, I have added K2C, uh, sorry, hypo from the burette dropwise. As we need to standardize hypo, therefore the solution is kept in the burette. So, whichever solution needs to be standardized is always in the burette. Okay? Now, I hope the solution color is clear to all of you. It is diminishing in color as in the color is painting. So, it is now time to add the starch indicator. Okay? Now, in this we are going to add our starch like this. How much starch needs to be added? Around 1 to 2 ml. Okay. So, here we go. Starch is now in and there is a color change. Okay. Now, we are going to continue the titration till we will achieve a green coloration. Again, we will maintain the dropwise pattern of introducing the burette solution. Alongside, we are going to continuously swirl the solution in the conical flask. Okay. So, you can see the dropwise hypo is doing the reaction. This is the oxidation reduction reaction going on. We are performing iodometry. So, you must have observed the color change just happened in a single drop. This is called as a single drop color change. Okay, and this is the color which we are looking for. So, this becomes the end point of the first part that is standardization of hypo solution. Right. Now, we will read the reading after taking out the burette from the stand. Okay, and if you will observe carefully, you will notice that the end point is around 22. 22.1 is the end point of this part. Okay. Now, we are again going to refill the burette and repeat the same process till we get concurrent readings. Okay. And the minimum concurrent readings becomes our end point. Okay. Now, we will proceed with the second part where we will estimate copper. Now, let us start the estimation of copper. For this, we have taken 25 ml of the given copper sample. Okay. To this, we add small amount of sodium carbonate okay. using this spatula. So, little bit of sodium carbonate goes in. Okay. This will form turbidity. Okay, you are aware that acid and base, they are going to form a salt. This salt we are going to dissolve. Okay, this we will do with the help of little bit of glacial acetic acid. Right, so we will take some glacial acetic acid. This is our glacial acetic acid. We are going to dissolve this turbidity with this. Okay? Add a little and swirl. You will observe 
that the solution has again turned clear. Now it is ready for the titration. Okay. So now we are going to add our Ki. This is the 10 ml 10 percent Ki and you are aware that as soon as we add Ki we are going to close the lid of the conical flask. Right. Now in this solution we have added before sodium carbonate. This we do just to dissolve or just to neutralize the mineral acid present in the copper sample. Okay. So, we do it for that. Now, we have again covered the sample. We are going to now titrate. I have refilled the burette to 0 mark again. Again, we are going to not add the indicator initially. We are going to wait for the solution to turn pale. Okay. Again we are adding you can see drop wise solution from the burette okay? because we want the reaction to get complete and we want at the end single point single drop color change. Okay? When we are going to add the indicator? When the color will become little pale. right? So, you must be observing that the color is slowly, slowly getting diminished. It is becoming fainter, right. So, now we are going to add our starch. This is our starch indicator. Just observe the color change. Again, 2 to 3 ml of starch. This is the color change which you will get after adding starch. Now continue titration till the color goes. Okay. It, the color will just fade out. At that time we are going to stop the titration. Okay. Now let us see drop wise again you observe the whole titration goes in drop wise. Alongside we are supposed to swirl the solution. We are just waiting for the solution to get to get a white color. So now we have got a white coloration and we have turned the burette down. So we will keep this solution like this for some time and finally we are going to add ammonium thiocyanate. Okay. Now we add ammonium thiocyanate 10 ml of it just to make sure that there is no iodine left over in the sample with starch. Okay. Agar uske starch ke saath kuch bhi iodine rehta, to again ye black color appear hua hota, jo nahi hua. Iska ye matlab hai ki hamara titration complete ho chuka hai. Right. So ye second part tha. Isko ek baar dekh lete hai phir se. Hamne start kiya tha copper ke sample se. Hamne 25 ml copper sample liya tha. Hai na? Usme hamne dala tha pinch of sodium carbonate. Uski turbidity ko humne dissolve kiya tha glacial acetic acid se. Jiske baad humne isme dala tha Ki, 10 ml Ki dala tha aur fir humne solution ko dhak ke rakha. Thik hai? Thodi der baad humne burette se solution dala jab tak ki wo pale nahi ho gaya. After it gets pale then we added our indicator starch. Starch dalne ke baad humne single drop color change ke liye pura titration kiya. Phir humne rest karne diya end point ke baad bhi aur humne ensure karne ke liye dala last mein ammonium thiocyanate. Okay. Aur 
अब ये हमें अगेन वाइट ही मिल रहा है देर इज़ नो ब्लू कलरेशन देर फोर इट मीन्स दैट द टाइट्रेशन इज ओवर दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट रीडिंग अब हम रीडिंग नोट कर लेंगे ब्यूरिट को स्टैंड से निकाल के हम देखते हैं कि इसकी रीडिंग आ रही है अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट सेवन ओके सो द सेकेंड पार्ट रीडिंग बिकम्स ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट सेवन दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट रीडिंग अब हम फिर से ये सॉल्यूशन को बेसिन में थ्रो करते हैं वी आर गोइंग टू रिपीट द सेम टाइट्रेशन एंड वी विल डू इट टिल वी गेट कॉन्करेंट रीडिंग्स जो भी मिनिमम कॉन्करेंट वैल्यू हुई दैट विल बी द एंड पॉइंट ऑफ सेकेंड पार्ट ओके सो वी हैव गॉट टू रीडिंग्स फर्स्ट एंड पॉइंट फर्स्ट ऑब्जर्वेशन टेबल में लिखेंगे सेकेंड एंड पॉइंट आप सेकेंड ऑब्जर्वेशन टेबल में लिखेंगे